I appreciate the introduction. This evening uh, we're going to talk about something uh, called melanin. It's what everyone is concerned about in the world. It's what they have a meeting about every three to five years. Germany, Italy, France, the U.S., they meet every three to five years and have a melanin convention and discuss the latest research in melanin. They have never invited a black scientist to that meeting in history. So we've had our own melanin conferences where we discuss this information involving melanin. Melanin is commonly associated with the pigment that causes your skin to be brown. So we figure that that's what melanin is about. But it's a little more than just the pigment that makes your skin brown. It's what we call a chemical key to life. The more melanin you have, the more civilized you are. The more melanin you have, the more psychic you are. The more melanin you have, the more information your brain can store. The more melanin you have, the faster the nerve transmissions are. The more melanin you have, the more sound you absorb in your ear, so you hear the full range of sound. No other race can do that. The more melanin you have, the more color you can absorb in your eyes. That's why your eyes are brown. You actually see the full color. You see this color where white folks see a paler tan. Because the more melanin you have, the more you can see what God has meant for you to see. The more melanin you have in your taste buds, the more you can taste the full flavor of the food. No other race can taste an apple like you can because they can't absorb the full flavor because you need melanin to absorb the full flavor of food. That's why we combine food differently from other races because we actually can taste the food. That's because of the high amount of melanin we have which we sometimes take for granted. Melanin is the chemical key to life. There is nothing else to study in science but melanin. We call it chemi, which means black. The people who study melanin particles call what they studying, the science is called chemistry, which you call chemistry, the study of melanin particles that go around in the orbit, and we call them electrons, protons, solitons. Those are melanin particles. That's why we call it chemistry. And the country you come from is called chemit which some people call Egypt. There is nothing else to study but melanin. And if you study chemistry or heard of chemistry and haven't heard the word melanin, you have just been studying social science. You go into a classroom and you call it biology, but biology is the way melanin controls the cell. And we call that little melanin sitting in the cell the new sun, the nucleus. The new sun radiates information and tells the cell how to operate, how to think, how to digest. That's melanin. Biology is the study of melanin and how it communicates. There's nothing else to study in if you're going into the living sciences. Melanin plays a part in your historical memory. The more melanin you have, the more you're connected to your ancestors. You can pull on thoughts that you didn't even know were there because melanin gives you ancestral memory. That's based on melanin. That's how we classify races, based on their melanin content. It's not the quality of melanin in your skin we're talking about. It doesn't mean a light-skinned brother is less black than you are. We're talking about the melanin produced inside their body by the pineal gland. That's the melanin we measure. Every living thing has to have melanin. White people have it, but they have a lesser amount. And their melanin is different from your melanin. Their melanin has sulfur in the middle, and your melanin has selenium in the middle. They're two different types of melanin. In fact, here, melanin is the biochemical key to life. It helps you metabolize carbohydrates. Of course, you use less energy to make energy, which we call conversion reactions. Less energy to make energy. We efficiently make 
energy because we have this melanin. Melanin is a polymer. I mean, poly means many. It has many characters. There's gas melanin. There's liquid melanin. There's crystallized melanin. And the one thing about melanin is it can be in two places at the same time. It's the only chemical that can do that. Melanin has memory. You can't destroy melanin. Melanin starts the foundation for any idea has to come from this darkness, come from this silence. This whole planet is sitting inside of melanin gas. It's dark out there. You think if you go outside the atmosphere of the earth, there will be sunshine everywhere. No, it's not. It's dark. And that's melanin gas. Everything comes from this dark silence called melanin. You have to go deep within, as they say. Go deep within that melanin crystal. That's how you're born. The baby wraps around the melanin crystal. And you call it the fetus position. Then it opens up like an umbrella. That's how you're born. Wrapping around the melanin crystal. And it lays the blueprint of how your muscles should grow. How your nerves should grow. How your bones should grow. It lays memory down permanently. Therefore, if I cut off your leg, Somebody going to say, leg's gone. You say, my leg hurt. You look down and say, you don't have a left leg. You say, well, it hurts. Because melanin is permanent memory. The body still knows it's a, a leg there. Melanin cannot be destroyed. They used to put it in vows, and they called it your holy relics. And they put it in little vows, and you find it in the pyramids of Egypt. Your holy relics. Those are melanin crystals. And people would tap into that to tap into you. That's melanin. So this is a book written by a chemist, uh, Carl Barnes. Nice fellow. He's a chemist, research chemist. And he's uh, not a good talker, you know. He's used to being in the lab with things that don't live. But that's OK. That's Carl. So uh, he writes. and. <laughs> He sometimes can go off the edge with a lot of long terms, but I'm going to keep it very simple for you. Because Carl wrote this book called Melanin, the chemical key to great blackness, as he called it. Melanin to the great blacks. That's a good book. You should privilege yourself by uh, perusing it one day. Now, this melanin that I'm talking about, you see it in your eyes, and it makes your eyes brown. But some people don't have any melanin. So when you look in the eyes, you're looking at the veins in back of the eyes, and therefore the eyes look blue and green and gray because you're looking at the veins in back of the eyes. But you actually have an isis, which we call an iris, named after a black woman. You call it the iris of your eye that's named after a black woman named Isis. Now, we're talking about the inside of the brain and these are brain cells increased to the size of a car they look like little bubbles here look like little bubbles but this brain cell is actually blown up to about the size of a car and in the center of your brain is this thing here it looks like a galaxy we don't know what it is it's really big in people's brains especially black folks we don't know what this thing is but it's sitting right below your pineal gland. It's a gland in the center of your brain, the center of your landmass, the center of your brain, the same place where Egypt sits in the center of the landmass of the earth. It's a gland there called the pineal gland. And we couldn't study it directly at one time, so we studied a pine cone and to study the spins and the cycles of this pineal gland. It's a little gland about the size of a pea. But it looks like a pine cone, and we call it the pineal gland, and it secretes this melanin, and it changes the melanin into hormones. These hormones stimulate action during the day. We call it serious action, serotonin. And in the evening, it makes you mellow, and this hormone is called melatonin. It makes you mellow. And the one that makes you serious during the day, we call it serotonin. So melanin controls when you're going to become a man, controls every clock in your body, controls when your eyelashes grow, when your eyebrows grow, when your teeth grow. Melanin synchronizes the rhythmicity of your system. 
keeps things from being in conflict, synchronizes motion, helps you dream, helps you have these thoughts that you didn't know you were going to have. Melanin does that. It's the key to everything. It's a man who showed you how this thing works. He said, these are the cycles in the body. Everything has a cycle. The tide goes out, the tide comes in. Everything has a cycle. There's day, there's night. Everything has a cycle. And you have all these cycles inside your body. The kidney has a cycle, the heart has a cycle, the intestines has a cycle. But something has to keep these things in order. And that's melanin. So a man said, I'm going to show you these cycles. I'm going to make them into little wheels and show you how these things are synchronized. And he said, here it is right here. It's a wheel clock. The man's name was Benjamin Banneker. He knew melanin. He said, you don't understand it, but I'm going to show you how this thing works. These are the cycles of your kidneys. This is the cycle of your pancreas. And he made them into wheels. And they all work. But they're synchronized by one rhythmicity, which they call melanin. That's where the wheel clock comes from. Every invention comes from your body. To know your body is to know everything. The camera comes from your eyes. The speaker comes from your ear. A nuclear reactor comes from your liver. A car motor duplicates your digestive system. Everything comes from your body. Crystals that they use in computers were learned from studying melanin crystals. That's where they got computer chips from. Everything comes from your body. If you want to know how to put something together, study the body. Computer chips duplicate melanin crystals. That's how they got it. No problem. You want to discover something? Discover yourself. So we're looking at this. And we're looking at this galaxy here. We don't know what it's about. It has orbits, it has spins. All we know is that it's sitting right underneath the pineal gland. And the pineal gland controls this rhythm thing, how this thing moves and spins. That's what it does. So many times people say, well, big deal, I got this melanin, but what has it done for me lately? I mean, well, what's all this information supposed to mean to me? You know, I, I put something in, I want to get something out. Why should I put some understanding in this stuff and it ain't going to help me in life? Well, just bear with me for a moment. Let's look at the human race. Let's look at the human race. Let's look at the origin of the word. Well, we're getting into etymology. Comes from the word hue. And the root of that word is hue, which means color. Man means spirit of thinking or being. When you put hue with man, you get human being or black being or black person. To be a person, by definition, you would have to be black. That's what the word hue means pigment. To be a man, to be a human being, you have to be black by definition. That's why some people said, we're not man, we're just mankind. And they tell you that, don't they? So this is one of those things where you can find out the difference of races because of this melanin. It causes when you cut your, your hair and on the sideways, a, a slice as we call it. Orientals hair is round like that. White folks' hair is divided like a kidney. Your hair looks just like the galaxy when you cut it that way. You're so in contact with everything. That's not outer space, that's your inner space. You're in contact with even your hair spells this to us. Same process.
So we look at that. You say, oh yeah, okay, we're different now. Skin is different. Yeah. But we also have more vitamins and minerals in our body than any other race. The melanin causes you to have more vitamins and minerals in your body than any race. That can present a problem. A big problem. Especially if all the lab values are set on the Europeans, on Caucasians, who have the least amount of vitamins and minerals in their body than any race. That's where the problem begins. Now we're coming along and you go to the hospital. They take your blood. They send it to the lab. But the lab values are based on white people's vitamins and minerals values. So when your vitamins and minerals way up here, drop all the way down to theirs, which is rated number one, their lab bag gonna say, ain't nothing wrong with you, you're healthy. You said, but I don't feel good. I said, well, according to, ain't nothing wrong with you. It's in your mind, something, but your lab bag you say you're fine. No, no, no. Your vitamin and mineral level dropped all the way down to their normal level, which means you are twice as sick. So you go back and you look at all the disease categories and sure enough, you're twice as high in all of them because you're trying to be healthy by another race's melanin value. So we're going to learn how to uh, find out how much melanin you have this evening. Find out whether you got enough to even be black. Maybe you're perpetrating a fraud. This melanin causes you to have more life in you, more moisture in you. So we can just look at the earwax. This is the earwax of northern Chinese, Japanese, 98. You have the most moisture in your earwax in any race. Isn't that something? I thought you said it was under the skin everything was the same. Oh yeah, your hair is different, your earwax is different, you have more vitamins and minerals in your bones, which we call nutrient density. So under the skin, you're different. Whoever told you under the skin everybody's the same, they lied. Because biochemically, you are different. So we have to be treated differently. Whenever you have the high end of a lab value, like the, they take your blood, send it to the lab, and they show you these values, say 80 to 120 is normal. Well, if your value comes up to be 110, and that's almost close to the highest level there, almost, you got it. Whatever it is, you got it. The high end of that normal, you got it. The low end of that normal, you got it. That's how you interpret the lab values according to your vitamin and mineral content. You got to translate this stuff. You got to make this stuff black. They ain't going to do it for you. Say, so wait a minute. The normal value is numbers between 80 and 120, and I had 110. You got it. Whatever it is, you got it. That presents a problem. Because 80 to 120 is a normal range for someone who has a good blood sugar rating. But the problem is black people get diabetes in the normal range for white people. They get it at 90, which is in the normal range for white people. You're walking around with diabetes. But you're looking at the normal value for a race that has another vitamin and mineral level than you. Another melanin content than you. In the normal range for the diabetes test, if you're in the normal range on the high end of it, you got it. You got diabetes. That was proven over and over again. It's an anatomist in uh, New York that does that research kind of work named Dr. Ann Brown. Now, here we go. The races of humans. This is how races are classified according to white people. Not according to me. This is not Dr. Africa said. This is according to John Hopkins University, Emory University. This is how they classify races. Rated one with the lowest melanin content is the Caucasians. Rated two and three are the yellow mix and brown race, which you call the Orientals. Rated four are the brown and red people, Native Americans and Japanese. Rated five are the black, brown, and brown people, which we call the Native Indians from Mexico. The Mexicans, Himalayas, you know that race I'm talking about? Rated six with the highest melanin content is black folks. You are rated the highest on the human scale by white people. Did you?
you know that? No. That would present a problem. You go in a classroom, they say, they start breaking this thing down to you. Say, we rated the highest on the human scale here. And you say, okay, and we come from Africa. Okay, uh, that means I can think better than you. I may not think faster than you, but I can outthink you. Yeah. So, okay, okay. Uh, is this stuff I'm making up? And I say, no, you're not making up. You really respond to life better than I do. Then they start showing you books, The Magical Child by Joseph Pierce. Then they start to show you another book, Infancy in Uganda by Mary Ainsworth. And these are books about them studying black children whose mother was on natural food and breastfed and father was on natural food and breastfed. And they studied these children and the child was born with these parents could sit up at birth, look his mother and father in his eye, know its name, know his mother and father's name at birth. Document it. The Magical Child by Joseph Pierce. They didn't believe it. They went back 10 years again, again and studied the same thing. Same thing happened. They didn't believe it. Mary Ainsworth went back and studied it. My infancy in Uganda. Same thing. Yes, you grow at a faster rate than white people. You have the highest, the fastest growth and development of a child than any race. You can be toilet fed, toilet trained at one year old. It takes a white child two years for their nerve to grow to that muscle that controls their bladder. You're raising your children like retards and wondering what's happening. Because nobody told you you had melanin. Nobody told you it causes you to have the highest growth and development. Nobody told you it le you learned how to toilet train earlier. No one told you you learned how to speak earlier. No one told you... Why should they tell you that anyway? You think they're going to tell you something so you want to be free? There is a biochemical difference between black women's breast milk and white women's breast milk because white women's breast milk has the least amount of vitamins and minerals in it of any breast milk. Black women's breast milk, has, I just told you that. Even white people know that. You ever heard of a white mammy? Uh, am I getting to you here? Even they know who has the best breast milk. Okay. Okay, maybe you think I'm going a little too far. The brother's gone off the edge here. He's gone up the... I'm just telling you, you go down south, <laughs> I'm telling you, they know who had the best breast milk. You don't know, but they know. So we got to go back here and, and rediscover ourselves for what we are. And that's what this science is all about. And I have the normal medical lab values, the normal daily allowances set by, for Europeans by Europeans, the breast milk is set on the white woman's breast milk, which has a different fat and protein ratio. What I'm saying is, if you put a black child on a white woman's breast, it reduces the child's sucking time on the nipple and reduces the child's response if you take the breast out of their mouth. It reduces the ability of the child to bond to itself, to bond to its mother, to bond to its culture. Just by switching the fat and protein ratio in the breast milk, which you call Sililac or Similac, which is based on a white woman's breast milk. Not a black woman's breast milk, a white woman's breast milk. So you give that to your child and it reduces the child's ability to bond to his mother and to bond to itself. That's why you got drive-bys. It's a biochemical thing. Oh yeah. This racism started long before you want to go to school with white folk, sit on the toilet next to white folk, and be integrated. This stuff started long before that. So, I'm going to make sure I've covered these things about the melanin, because I, sometimes I go a little too fast for myself. I got to put myself back and rewind, you know what I mean? So, what did I say? So we're saying that melanin is high in black folks, increased absorption in your eyes, increased the sound, has many 
shapes it can take, gas, liquid, crystal, we call polymer, converts energy best, I mentioned that, acts as a computer, stores information, translates information, transmits information. Now I said that, controls the cycles in your body, yes, controls your sleep, when you should go to sleep, I said melatonin makes you mellow, and serotonin makes you serious during the day, I mentioned that. Let's see if I got it, it controls the growth rate, lets you know when a boy should become a man, when a girl should become a woman. That's puberty. Melody controls that. Yeah, I got that part. Reacts to gravity. Electromagnetic force fields. That's right. What I'm saying is that you absorb more radiation from a computer than white folks do because of the melanin. Melanin wants to grab this stuff and get rid of it, but you keep shoving it and it keeps grabbing grabbing so it makes you have more radiation in your body than the white folks. You absorb more of it protect yourself from the radiation, something called a diode, something called a polarizer, something called a bioelectric shield. These things deflect this radiation from the cell phone, the computers, the beepers, because radiation causes cancer, retards growth, and dries your skin, just dries you out sitting in front of a computer. So we're talking about skin melanin. We have more of that. Protects you from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. What I'm saying is you eat the sun. Sun shines on your skin, some cholesterol picks it up, takes it to the liver and converts it to vitamin D2. You actually eat the sun. The more sun you absorb, the more stronger your bones are. The less sun you absorb, the more weak your bones are. You got to take vitamin D if you live in this climate. You're not getting enough sun. You need vitamin D. You're not getting enough sun. You got to have at least two hours of sunlight to stimulate the melanin. Allows protection from extreme hot and cold temperatures. That's what melanin does. Eskimos are not white people. Eskimos are colored people. Causes you to have the least amount of hair on your body than any other race. Because melanin can insulate your energy so you won't lose it. You don't need to be all hairy to keep the heat in. The melanin keeps it in for you. Yeah, that's where they got this thing called Teflon from. They studied melanin. There's nothing else to study. Eyes are brown due to melanin, allows better reception to the sun's light, absorbs the full color, and so you can see true colors. I think I went over that. Just making sure I'm covering things, because we don't want to get lost in this sauce here. Now, I'm going to show you something that a lot of times you see on them little television shows where they show you the hospital, somebody come in there sick, and say, all right, uh, 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 we're going to put the leads on, stand back, clear. You seen that stuff, boom, and they do all that action stuff. Yeah, man, that's exciting stuff. Doesn't work without the melanin. Doesn't work without it. Because this is melanin. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, doper, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. That gets converted into melanin. Tryptophan, serotonin. Melanin still an ain't hormone, melanocytes, melanin. All of that's derivatives of melanin. The first thing they do when you go in the hospital as emergency, they put some phenylalanine into it. Epinephrine, you call it. You used to call it speed. You ever heard of a phedra? Epinephrine. That's a, that's a version of melanin. They put that epinephrine in you, which is melanin, put them electrical leads on you, say, stand back. They say, okay, if this black don't bring them back, Put the white sheet on the ass. <laughs> First they thought they put that melanin in you. If that don't bring you back, they gonna put the white sheet on you. Uh, praise Jesus. Uh, so we're talking about this conversion reaction here. These are, these are forms of melanin. Tryptophan, serotonin, melanocytes, epinephrine, norepinephrine. These are what we call conversion reactions. Tell you convert it all the way to melanin or you convert it the other way. Conversion clockwise, conversion counterclockwise. These are melanin derivatives or particles. So much for that. You know what harms melanin? Oh, caffeine, nicotine, codeine, things you like. Alcohol, vinegar, oh, things you like. They hurt your melanin, stop you from being black. Nicotine, caffeine, cocaine, codeine, morphine, all of these stop you from being black. Nobody in here messes with that, of course.
let's just look at some foods that help stimulate your melanin production. Now what we're talking about is stuff you already know about. You already know about this. You already know about it. Foods that stimulate your melanin. So you know you got to be serious all day. So if you're driving on this serious lane, you got to eat things that help you stay serious. What's the point if I got a 300 pound bodybuilder and I'm giving him some diet as a tennis player? He ain't going to like it. He ain't going to be able to function. That's the wrong diet for him based on what he does. You got to eat according to what you do. So you're not eating according to what you do. A person has to eat according to what they do, just like a bird does. The bird's going to do something today, they're eating in that tree. They say, well, we got to go down the hood tomorrow. Let's go over here and get some coconuts or something because we got to see the neighbors. So they eat in another tree. They don't eat in the same tree every day. They ain't stupid. They eat according to what they're doing that day. Don't they? Except them birds eat at McDonald's now. They're a little whack. You know, I ain't, I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about the birds, the real birds. <laughs> you be seeing them pigeons eating at McDonald's. You see them. You can drive up next to them in the car. They just look at you. What is that? I don't care. <laughs> they forgot about that. You're a bird. You're supposed to fly out the way, bird. They're walking across the street just like you, waiting for the light to change. Man, please. So you're trying to be serious during the day, so you got to eat things that are serious. So sometimes we have the herbs that you use to help you be serious. Ginkgo, Gota Cola, Damiana. Eyebright's good for the nerves. Good for Parkinson's. Good stuff. Echinacea. That's when you're trying to be serious. But now if you're all high voltage all the time, you can't go this way. You're already high voltage anyway. You're just going to push this out further. Overdrive. So you got to do chamomile with your ginkgo. What I'm saying is that there's, these are herbs good for your brain, like ginkgo and go to cola. But you got to drive it the way you want. If you want the ginkgo or go to cola to go slow, you add chamomile to it, or catnip, or hots, or kava. Have you heard of these things? Because you wanted to go at this melatonin speed. But if you needed to go at a better speed, because you're doing some serious stuff, you got your ginkgo or go to cola, but you need to, you know, up rev this stuff up. So you mix some Damiana with it. Because you're just shifting gears. Because we talked about shifting gears earlier. I said you got the thyroid, parathyroid. You just got to shift gears according to what you do. So you got to shift gears on these herbs. They ain't all that smart. You look on TV, some white boy killing them things with spray. The herbs just dumb, just standing looking at them. Well, I don't know. I don't. The man just spray them and kill them. The weed killers. You see them on TV killing the dandelion root, which is good for your liver and good for your pineal gland. Dandelion root. Good for your pineal gland. That's the first thing you kill and call it a weed. I ain't going to go there. So, we got the foods that I mentioned before that are good for the melanin. Maybe you've heard of them. Apricots, apples, peaches, mangoes, papayas, star fruit. Have you heard of those? Figs, dates, bananas, plantains particularly, bananas to a lesser degree. Plantains are better than the bananas. Yams, I'm talking about white yams. Yams that are, you cook and get slimy like okra. I'm talking about yams. I'm not talking about that sweet candy yams you're thinking about. I'm talking about yams. You cut them open. They're white inside. Some of them are green inside. Some of them are purple inside. They come in all colors, just like people. So I'm talking about the yams, red cherries, blue grapes, things with color in them. I'm talking about you folks who don't like to eat the stuff with color. You get the turkey, which y'all want? Give me the white meat. Don't give me that Negro meat. No, that, that dark meat is good for you. Blueberries, collard greens, very high in calcium. Cauliflower, which is a fruit. Oranges, dandelion greens. Fresh olives, not those things soaked in vinegar. That will mess with your pineal gland. Raw peanuts, not cooked peanuts. And remember, peanuts are a bean. They are in the bean family. They are not nuts. And George Washington Carver didn't invent peanuts. He just worked some experiments on them. But we went to school, we said, George Washington Carver, that's the man who invented peanuts. That's how you go when you, you've been educated in the hood. You know that. Strawberries, currants, lemons, turnips, and soybeans. All of which are good for melanin. Carbohydrates increase your tryptophan, which increases your calmness. That's why people get sleepy when they eat turkey, because it has tryptophan in it. It causes calmness. Pro 
Protein increases your dopamine and norepinephrine and tyrosine and alertness. Fruits stimulate your energy. Vegetables stabilize your energy. Very simple to be healthy. You got to really work at being sick. You got to ignore all the good advice. I heard that this is bad for me. I heard the, I heard him say, I read it in the book. And he said, I'm going to eat it anyway. It sure look good. You got to work at being dumb. Dumb don't come that easy. So we're looking at these things and looking at it a little bit differently. We talk about the growth and development and how this thing occurs, how this whole thing is set in motion by the way you bond. Because bonding is something that melanin facilitates. That's why a black person cannot have an intellectual thought without a spiritual thought being attached to it. Because melanin clusters things. It causes a community, causes a family. Melanin clusters information. So you can't have an intellectual thought unless there's a spiritual thought attached to it. Not if you're black. You just do it but automatically. Oh, Jesus, I dropped my pencil. You instantly attach something spiritual to things. You cluster things. You cannot have intellectual thought without a spiritual thought. You automatically attach spirituality to things. Automatically. You listen to Elvis Presley, he said, yeah, sound good, but that boy ain't got no soul. Attaching spiritual value to it. It didn't have, an, it was technically correct, but it didn't have no spiritual value, therefore it's not correct. The first thing you say, I don't know what it is, but if I can't see God in it, I don't see it. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I mean when I say you're attaching spiritual value to it. If you don't see God in this thing, you don't see the thing. Melanin causes you to cluster that information like that. You've got to see the God value in this thing. That's being black. That's being melanin. But we've gotten away from that. Because we've been trained to be away from that. We've been trained to go against our own nature. And if you fight in your own nature, you're going to lose. You know how people fight their own nature. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking Let me just talk to you. You know what I'm talking about, right? People fighting their nature. Suppose a lady straightens her hair. Then she go out in the rain. Is her hair going back to Africa? Yeah. Right. She's going to lose that battle. Because you're fighting your own nature. You're going to lose. So the objective is to keep you fighting your own nature. It is your nature to be spiritual. It is your nature to be family. It is your nature. It is in your genes. That's what we talk about. We talk about a little strip called DNA with a strand of melanin. That's how we talk about things. We take a little bit of this DNA string off and we call it a gene. A gene is a particle of a melanin strip known as DNA. DNA is melanin. What are you studying? Melanin. What have you ever heard? No melanin. Last time I talked about it, a guy said, what kind of watermelon is that? Melanin? I, I ain't never ate no melanin. I, I ate a honeydew melon, but a watermelon. melon. <laughs> I said, where am I at? Where am I at? I'm in Grand Rapids. Excuse me, I didn't mean no harm. So we're talking about this melanin and the melatonin levels and how it just starts going lower and lower as you age. What have they have discovered is that this pineal gland that sits in the center of your brain and white folks will start getting hard around 12. By the time they're 20, the gland does not even function. That's what I'm talking about. Their pineal gland calcifies, gets hard by the time they're 13 or 14. Oh, you know it. You see it all the time, but you just don't believe it. Oh, yeah. Now, where, why ain't they got some rhythm? That's what you'd be asking yourself. And I'm saying technically, they, they don't have no pineal gland to make this stuff that cause rhythm. you saying they sure ain't got no rhythm. I wonder why that is. Duh. They don't have the thing that controls rhythm in the body. Melanin, that pineal gland that squirts out this melanin is calcified, turns into stone by the time they're 13. And they tried now, they tried. They draw steps on the ground, everything. They tried, they, they be doing that stuff. You say, dang, they got the steps on the ground, they hear the music, and they still dance. I'm like, you know, what, what, what's going on with them people? It's the melanin. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So science attached to this stuff. Melanin makes your system 
burn energy more efficiently. So you don't need the stuff chemically that they need. You don't need that. See, you're efficiently human. But when you're not taught that, you don't know what you, human is. Human is your ability to be in contact with that inner voice, that deep silence, that dark crystal inside of you. What God put in you, you're just in contact with the God in you. That's all you're doing. So we're looking at this melanin. We're trying to say there's a purpose for it. And there's a way to do this. If you want to control somebody, just destroy their melanin. This is how you do it. This is how drugs work. Drugs work on their ability to destroy melanin, speed it up, or slow it down. This is how we measure the effectiveness of drugs. This is how it's done. We say that Prozac stops the ability to absorb serotonin, which is, comes from melatonin, which comes from melanin. It's right on the label. Prozac, serotonin reuptake inhibitor, says it on the label. Serotonin, melatonin, melanin. It works by stopping the body from absorbing melanin. Right there in front of you. That's how the drug works. That's how you gauge the age of the brain, by how well it absorbs melanin. That's how they know how old mummies are. Dark crystals, carbon, melanin, that's how they play the game. How does a person become diabetic? You say, I don't know anything, but I know what he said. You have to destroy the melanin. Sure enough, you look on the pancreas, there are melanin spots on there. We call them islands of lacquer house. Black little islands on the pancreas. The islets of Langer House. German for little islands. These little black islands on the pancreas, once you destroy them, the person becomes a diabetic. That's how they become diabetic. It's the ability to destroy melanin, speed it up or slow it down is how we measure drugs effectiveness. That's how the game is played. Okay. I said that about melanin and diabetes. Okay, well, what else happens here with this melanin thing? Hmm, let me see. Prozac works by stopping your body from absorbing serotonin. Hmm, then what's going on here is there's an attack on your blackness. This is called chemistry. They told you that's why they call it chemistry. So when they want to make a chemist call, it has something to do with chemi with black. They say it. It's in the word. Chemi means black. They're using chemistry to control you. They're using blackness to control you. It's right in the word. It's the ability to destroy life. It's very, very simple. It's very simple. We tend to make things complicated, so we have an excuse not to accept them. So this is too complicated, but no, it's quite simple. Without this black stuff, you don't have no life. That's the way information is transmitted in your brain. You have a, 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 spine, a spinal cord, you call it. At the top of that spinal cord, your brain sits on the spinal cord. But at the top of that spinal cord is 12 melanin centers. And all information goes to those 12 melanin centers before it's distributed to your brain. We call it melanin reticulum formations. It's got to go to those 12 centers. You have 12 of them on your brain stem. White people only have four. You have 12 on your brain stem. White people only have four. Don't you understand? Your brain looks like theirs, but it functions differently. You have a larger middle brain than any race. You have better communication between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of your brain. Melanin facilitates that. They say you have to go through these 12 steps before you can become alcohol free. 12 step program to escape the chemical damage. You've got to go through these 12 steps. You thought, have you ever heard this 12 stuff? Oh yeah, this is what they're talking about. They tell you what they're talking about. You're just not listening to them. Oh yeah. It's a, in order to become a human being, you've got to understand these 12 dimensions of yourself. 
You gotta climb, climb Jacob's ladder. We are coming, climbing Jacob's ladder. You are understanding these 12 aspects of yourself. That's what they call a rites of passage. Where you understand these 12 aspects of yourself. You go through a rites of passage when you're 12 or 11 years old. Before we were brought over here in Africa, we went through these things called a life or rites of passage where they taught you to be a man so you could become a man. You had to be taught to become a woman. You, you had to go through, you just didn't become a woman. You had to go to school to become a woman. And we call that a rites of passage. So they took you through this rites of passage where you understand these 12 dimensions of yourself. You understand when to use your Sagittarius per emotions, uh, uh, Pisces emotions. For those of you who understand astrology, some of you understand what I'm talking about. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Say something here. I'm not. There are part. You have to have more than just one emotion. When you came here and were introduced to slavery, I'm going back there. Okay, you were introduced to slavery. You said, "Massa, I love you. Massa, I fear you. No, Massa, I ain't gonna run away." They taught you just to have a small emotional range. So you don't have one emotion. I love you, Master. I'm not going to run away. I, small emotions you had. Are you following me now? But you're supposed to have 12 different emotions that you can use anytime. Some people can have a Taurus emotion. You have to have all these different emotions. A Pisces emotion, a Gemini emotion, a Sagittarius. You have to have all of these emotions. That's your emotional vocabulary. That's your 12 steps of Jacob's Ladder. That's what you're supposed to have. Now, if you just have, ah, you my friend or you're not my friend, you're either with me or against me, that's a small emotional range. Are you following me here? So, so what happens if you get in a rela relationship? You're with a woman, right? She needs one emotion before she gets pregnant, another emotion when she's pregnant, another emotion after she has a baby, but all you got is, I love you, you love me, I love you, why don't we get together? That's all. You don't have emotional vocabulary, so when she asks you to have these other emotions, you don't have them. Somebody took away your emotional vocabulary. Somebody trained you like a slave, and so you're still acting like that. These other emotions you don't know nothing about then you wonder why the relationship doesn't work. But the minute somebody say, I love you, they're asking you for emotional vocabulary. They're not asking you for something intellectual. Are you following me? Because love is emotion. So what they're asking you for is emotion, but you don't have them. All you have is, I love you, you love me, let's go. I mean, really. She made me one emotion before she goes into menopause, another emotion when she's in it. I'm telling you, you got to have it. People need different emotions. But all you have is those ones that we were just forced to have because we were in slavery. That's why they say you gotta climb Jacob's ladder, understand all these emotional degrees, degrees of yourself. Because you need the emotional vocabulary. Don't let actors have it. You need it too. Otherwise, when you're crazy, you just stay crazy. You don't have enough emotions to get out of it. You get depressed, you just stay depressed. You don't know how to switch emotional gears, so you get stuck. That's a person who's emotionally crippled. But what gives you this range, this flexibility to go to these different emotions, to have these different dance steps, to have these different moves on the tennis court and on the basketball court, is the melanin. You're not using your blackness. Because the white slave master don't want you to use your blackness. So he shut that down. And I'm trying to say, you got to recapture this thing. You say, I got melanin. I'm going to stimulate my melanin today. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I may play the lottery ticket, but at least I got it working. So we got to get exposed to this information. Not, if it's not for yourself, then for the children. Say, yeah, you got melanin. You need to know something about it. I was, I was, I was raised, I ain't know nothing about it. I was 30 years old before I even heard the word. You, you know what I'm saying here? That's pitiful. That is absolutely pitiful. That's what they say about us. A black person can either be poor primitive or pitiful. We have to understand our melanin so it gives us a better range. The more information you have, the more power you have. And this gives you another form of power. So I don't know what this melanin's about, but at least I'm going to try it. I tried I.W. Harper, didn't I? I tried the super burger, I tried some french fries, try some melanin. It's not going to hurt you. So that's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to end this formal part of the uh, talk on melanin at this point and just open up for uh, 
questions about the melanin or some subjects they are related. <laughs>